Hi, and welcome to Ask Rosemary. These are 30 minutes devoted to you to answer all your questions regarding how to use Zoom more effectively, how to look better, how to sound better, how to basically up your level of knowledge of video conferencing in general. I'm Rosemary Ravenel, and I am your virtual public speaking coach, presentation skills, and media trainer. And this time is yours. So you can participate in various ways. You can post your questions in the chat on Facebook or LinkedIn. And you can also, if you missed today's session, you can send me at info at rosemaryravenel.com questions ahead of time, and we'll answer as many as time permits. Today, we have a special treat. I'd like to introduce and welcome Gina Bloom. Gina is a, a good friend and public relations professional. She also is a Zoom expert. She works with senior communities, creating special educational programs to help elders improve their communication via Zoom. Hey, Gina, how are you? Hi, thank you for the invitation, Rosemary. Wonderful to see you today. Terrific. Well, we've got questions that I have received already, and I'm sure you have a lot of questions you receive from your students. Why don't we get started? And again, please, for those of you who are watching live, please post your questions in the chat, and we will answer them right here and give you something you can put to use right away. I have a question that came in earlier, which is, actually, this is based on, Gina, this was a uh, LinkedIn poll that I did this past week. And I asked a few questions in terms of what are the gaffes that bother people the most. And so it was uh, people who uh, speak while they're muted. Uh, then it was um, the people who don't turn on their videos. And then it was this one, uh, an unwanted noise from an unmuted mic. And this is the one that won way over the others. I thought that it was people who wouldn't, who didn't put on their videos was annoying. But I was really surprised, like 70% of people responded that this is what bothers them. So what can we tell people to do? Well, I would be one of those 70% as well. It's very aggravating when you hear all sorts of background noise, whether it's pets, children, you know, you're trying to conduct business, or, you know, as a participant, as a host, you know, it can really throw you off, you know, if you have all of this background noise and can't get the attention of your audience. As you know, you really have a short amount of time to catch the attention. And once you lose your audience, it is a challenge to get them back. So um, I'm a big fan of the mute all button as a host. And I always do some housekeeping uh, prior to any Zoom meeting that I am hosting by letting my audience know that uh, they will be muted. However, that they can still converse in the chat box if they need to uh, with other participants or the host. Um, also, I have found it to be uh, extremely helpful when you are setting up your Zoom meeting right. in, in the Zoom controls. You know, and the way you configure it is to leave the box uh, unchecked, which uh, would allow participants to join before the host. Um, because that way, for example, uh, in, a, in a recent situation, the host was not in the meeting and it was just only the participants. And we, we were unable to mute a participant who didn't realize he was on mic and couldn't get his attention. So uh, it was a big challenge. You know, we actually had to abandon that Zoom meeting and start a completely new one. Oh my, but as, as a host, you have a lot or co-host, you can also make someone a co-host so that you don't lose the, the thread of what you're saying and you, you're leading a meeting, you don't wanna have to stop what you're doing and then take care of this housekeeping detail. But if you assign someone to be a co-host, that person can take care of those, those glitches. You know, That's an the, excellent you know. point. Oh my gosh, I wish I had team members, but usually I'm flying solo on my presentations, but you're right, it's hard to manage a meeting and then also manage chat, manage sound, manage everything all on your own. So excellent point. If you can have somebody else in your on your team help you out uh, as an assistant off camera, that's fantastic. You know, it, it happened to me. It happens to even people who are like us, who are professionals at this. It can you know it's just so easy to to forget that you have you're unmuted. I was in a a mastermind not that long ago, and I had to step off early. Uh, I had a, a call that was very important. Well, I stepped off the call, but I I I turned off my video, but I didn't turn off my microphone. And I had stepped away from, from the screen, from the webcam, and I was taking the call in another part of my office. And 
I, I wasn't muted. People were crazy. They were calling me and I didn't realize they were calling. I was using my phone. They were calling me and texting me to tell me my mic was on. Uh, so unfortunately they didn't override uh, the uh, the settings, they could have muted me, you know, directly. But I can imagine, I went on for about five minutes. It must have been, I was so embarrassed, but I had no idea that I had forgotten to unmute. So it can happen. Look, um, we've all been there. I keep myself, and that's an excellent point. I actually keep a checklist uh, next to my laptop, uh, you know, prior to my meeting, you know, things to take care of prior to my meeting, but also in meeting, I do a lot of screen sharing of content. I do run programs uh, for uh, communities and organizations, and I have a checklist. And number one is turn your camera off. Number two is turn your mic off uh, when you go to screen share, because I've inadvertently, you know, I'll catch a snack or something in between. <laughs> <laughs> While the program's crunch, running, crunch, crunch. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'll realize like a minute in that everybody's yeah. watching me eat. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Here's another one that just that, that just came to me. Um, when you want to mute just for the moment, there is a, a shortcut you can press your uh, your space bar on your keyboard. Right. Yes. Yeah. So Let's as see. long as okay. as long as you have that set up in your actual Zoom control. So when you um, are in the Zoom web client, not, not your desktop app, but when you're at zoom.us and you go into your account settings, make sure you go into your meeting settings. That's an excellent point. And play around. There are so many ways to customize. And one of them is the shortcuts that you can use. Uh, right. That's an excellent point. Yes. How often we see people when you say to somebody you're muted or mute, and then they're looking for the the little icon, and you see them, you know, you, depending on what kind of device you have, trying to find where the cursor is where they can go, and and and, and click that button, and uh, it's not that easy. However, if you do use the space bar, make it, it doesn't work all the time. Sometimes, if you mute yourself that way and you unmute yourself, you can go back and forth. You can toggle back and forth. But sometimes it doesn't work. And, and for some reason with my space bar, it sometimes falters and I have to actually go manually to the. To the I've, had that, I've had that same glitch. I'm not sure if the latest Zoom update. And that's another thing. Always be up to date on the latest version of Zoom. They recently released a, a, a new update a few days ago. And right. again, you, you'd have a lot of these glitches fixed and a little bit more customization and you won't break anything. Always rehearse, play around, you know, start your meeting in advance, take some time on the side and just really familiarize yourself uh, with the controls, both as a host and also as a participant. You know, if you're called on during a meeting and you can't figure out, you know, <laughs> where the controls are, it can be a challenge, you know, to your other colleagues and trying to conduct business. Right. And some people might might be listening. And by the way, if you have any question, any question at all, it can be a very basic question. Please, we'd love to see it in the chat and we'll answer it right away. So again, on Facebook or LinkedIn, please use the uh, the comments to uh, post your question for Gina or myself. Another thought is that we're talking technical, but what happens is if um, if you don't know how to work the basic controls for the platform, it can be Zoom, it can be Teams, it can be GoToMeeting, then you're going to be wasting time. You're going to come across unprofessional if you stumble on these things. So why take the risk? of not knowing where to go and where to click. Just want, you want to be smooth. You want people to be focused on what you're saying, not that you had to stumble because you didn't know how to work the platform. And that's a great point. Uh, I've been involved in uh, fairly recently in some platforms I've, I'm not very familiar with. So prior, a day or so prior to the meeting, I'll go and check it out, especially when it comes to you know using my green screen and how will I look on camera. There are so many different settings that are, 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 you know, compared to like, I'm more familiar with Zoom, you know, uh, that are different, for example, in like a Google Meet or a GoToMeeting. So it's definitely good to familiarize yourself. So, you know, you don't waste the time uh, during the meeting, figuring it I out. I know. Just another, mm -hmm. another anecdote. So we're waiting for questions to come in, although we have a lot of others to, to answer. Sometimes if it goes to like a go to meeting and I haven't set up my camera properly, you know, I have everything curated, but it grabs a wider shot. So that then everything I didn't want to show showed, <laughs> including, you know, the messy part of the room. So you have to make sure, again, plan, prepare, plan, don't yeah. assume anything. Every platform is a little bit different. Right? That's right. And that's why I love the blur feature that a lot of these platforms have adopted. And also, I'm a big proponent of using a green screen, which I have behind me, uh, to really give a crisp image. 
uh, especially in some of these platforms, you know, if they do a wider shot, I have a wide green screen behind me that generally covers, you know, the wider camera angles it may pick up. Yes, agreed. Let's go to the next question, shall we? Great, let's hear it. Uh, what can be done when the screen is frozen? Oh my gosh, this ha I, you know, this happened to me last week all the time. I don't know if it was because school was back in session and there's limited bandwidth everywhere. I'm, I'm not sure what was happening, but uh, definitely a challenge. And you know, usually, at least on Zoom, you'll see this cryptic message that the internet's unstable, <laughs> whatever that means. Yes. So um, that usually is a cue for you to repeat your last few moments of your conversation. Generally, I find, you know, my participants or my, you know, whomever I'm in a meeting with are very understanding because the same thing happens to them. However, uh, I do recommend to try in, in the attempt to reduce that would be to have an ethernet connection and not rely on Wi-Fi. It's really a more stable connection. And, and specifically to the Zoom platform, they do recommend having a ethernet connection. Um, also, I recommend to offload any excess video content. We are in the age of video, everything is video. So uh, I record all of my programs. However, that takes up a lot of space. So my new favorite is uh, this crucial uh, external uh, SSD drive. This holds a few terabytes. And as you it can see, so it's tiny. It's so really tiny, compact. it's portable. You can take it with you. I've uh -huh. had, uh, since we've returned to in-person, I also do have in-person clients. So I'm able to quickly take my, my data with me. You know, cloud storage, you know, if you don't have it in your budget to increase cloud storage for video, uh, this is an excellent way to, to have a, a, an additional uh, area, you know, uh, to offload your content and really make your devices run smoother because there's only so much power for your graphics card. A Zoom takes up a ton of bandwidth when it runs. Mm -hmm, uh, so mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a big challenge. What do you yeah. do, Rosemary, um, in those cases well, when your screen freezes up? First up? of all, I know that I my computer, my desktop is three years old. So I need to upgrade that. I have to get like a gaming uh, gaming tower. You computer. need more power, girl. <laughs> more CPU, a lot faster speed. That That's for sure. Secondly, I also make sure that I close all my other programs, even a Word document. Anything that's running in the background, I make sure that it's closed. And I go to the task bar, you know, to, a task manager, I should say, to make sure that everything is closed, even those that aren't showing. Then the other thing is, if you're really stuck and you have very unstable connection, you might just want to go at least temporarily on just voice, on just the, in other words, turn off your video because the video is what really sucks in the, all, all that, that, uh, that data and can slow down the transmission. So if you want to just stay on the call without the, the, freezing up, you can just temporarily turn off your video, just do audio, continue to participate, and then try again and see if your connection is more stable. That's an excellent point. Uh, I have some international clients, and sometimes the internet connection is very tenuous. So I, you know, last resort, I we will go off video and just have like almost a typical telephone call just to keep the meeting going. Also, there are some Zoom settings that you can adjust uh, from your Zoom uh, desktop client, so that's the app located on your device. Uh, for example, if you are having issues freezing up, you cannot, you could uh, choose not to broadcast in HD. And then also, Zoom has a feature uh, which a lot of folks are in love with, has touching up your appearance. Yes, you know? Enhance my appearance. Enhance your appearance. So uh, if you turn that, actually takes a lot of bandwidth up. So if you turn that off, that will also help uh, reducing the uh, freezing of your screen. We don't need that. We're so beautiful anyway. We don't need to enhance our excellence. <laughs> uh, we have a question. We have a couple of questions. Should we, should we take some questions live? Yeah, let's take some live questions. Okay. Dave Bricker, thank you for your comments on green screen. Too many people attempt a virtual background without one, and the result is always terrible yes i was with somebody earlier their head disappeared it was like the headless horseman uh that's a great question dave so uh of course you know zoom uh, they they have an option that says you know that uh even if you don't have a green screen their virtual backgrounds are compatible and we've all seen it you see i have like the crazy hair and my head would disappear so i uh use a product called web around i love it it doesn't take up any uh, floor real estate. I'm in a very tight space. 
Uh, and I'm happy to recommend that to folks. I can put that in the chat. Yeah, um, and you can actually, yeah. if you if you work in different locations, let's say you do a a co working space and then you go to your office. Even if you're in your office, you're still going to be connecting with in virtual meetings with people who are working remotely. So you need to have that as part of your basic equipment. You can take it with you, folds up, right, like a little, little yeah. satchel, and you can take it as part of your uh, everyday um, equipment for for connecting, doing your work. Basically, it becomes essential part of your uh, toolbox. Yeah, I love the web around. A, a great point, Fan. It's portable and it's flat. And uh, again, it's in terms of an investment, it's a very minor investment to make you look professional. And again, I'm using my real estate to uh, promote my company's brand. Uh, you can do it, use it for a number of uh, other, uh, you know, uh, advertising options as well for your business. Great. So it's fantastic. Great question. I chose to go natural today. Um, but uh, but I have a, a whole set of branded backgrounds, by the way, that have my logo as yours does. Shall we take another question? Yeah, uh, let's hear it. LinkedIn user. I'd love to hear your name, but LinkedIn user. Uh, and even restart before you begin to get off, get rid of everything in the background, including cash. This is, I guess, for the frozen screen uh, question. Yes, that's great. Um, I, I actually do that. I restart my computer all of the time, especially Windows always does the mysterious update. Uh, I've had that happen uh, prior to program. So I always make sure I'm good to go. Uh, I, you know, I start about an hour or so before my program, you know, in terms of all of my checklists of items. That's, that's a great you point. Can, you can never, you know, it's like, it's like rehearsing for a stage play. I mean, you have to rehearse every time. You can't just go cold. You have to prepare. And that's the secret to success. Although most people don't see that, right? That's part of the sweat equity you have to put in, in order to come across as your best. That's right. Rehearse, rehearse, and rehearse some more. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Shall we take another question or take one? Okay. So, okay. This is a good one. One that we don't think about very often. Uh, how do I adjust lighting based on time of day? I'll tell you what happened to me this morning. I was conducting a workshop and the sun, I face east. The sun in some mornings when the, tees, the, well, the trees are pruned and then the light comes in like a, like a bolt. And it was it was hitting me right in my face. So I had to, I didn't expect that this morning. I had to actually climb on a little step stool, take a huge piece of uh, a flip chart paper and put it up to block that particular spot where the light was coming in through the blinds. And it, it worked. So it's uh, about understanding the environment you work in, right? But it's also having some quick fixes because that light, even if it stayed on me for, five minutes or even a minute, it was so distracting that it was going to um, take away from the effectiveness of what I was doing. You're right. We are not in a controlled TV studio setting. You know, I'm in a house with windows and, uh, you know, in the specific room I'm in, depending on where the sun is and what, if I'm conducting the program in the afternoon or at nighttime, it varies. So I've actually changed the window treatments. Uh, to have adjustable blinds just for that uh, simple, you know, uh, problem. And Rosemary, you know, is adjusting for the sunlight. And also, I've also uh, found helpful is to have uh, an LED floor lamp. This is in addition to the other lighting that I have in my setup, but it right. operates on a remote. And I love That's this cool. because you can, you know, while your meeting is in progress, I we had big rainstorm come through the other day, and all of a sudden the sky went dark. I was able to adjust my lighting during my meeting. And there are also um, other preset options on here. So you can do daylight, warm light, and it's LED, so it doesn't give off any heat. Uh, it's really uh, a wonderful addition and very inexpensive addition uh, to your uh, studio setup, your home studio setup. Right. right. To your point, Gina, that uh, there's so much equipment available today. It's not expensive. I mean, yes, you can go top of the line, but for our purposes of a home office, if you go to Amazon, you can go to any any online store, but Amazon has a good sort of snapshot of what's available in the market generally. And you can see the price points and you can see that some of these are as affordable as if you were even more affordable than if you were to get a regular desk lamp. So check out what's available. The, the fact that we're living so much of our lives in virtual has spawned really a lot of creativity and new product development, right? To, to address the everyday needs we have to stay connected. You're exactly right. And prices have really come down. Like even webcams, 
you know, at the height of the pandemic, first of all, you couldn't even find one, but when you did, the prices were astronomical. They've really become more reasonable for, you know, the everyday consumer, not just, you know, the business owner. And also, you know, last resort, we all have lamps, things laying around the house that are unused in rooms, Take, grab one, have it ready to go, right. Um, right. you know, you know, for your setup. And, and again, test out. I, I always test things out in advance just to see so I won't be caught off guard as much. <laughs> Great. Let's take another question. Great. Uh, do we have a question from LinkedIn? Okay, let's let's go to this one. Aha. Uh -huh. Can I wear stripes and patterns on Zoom? No. no. <laughs> Let me show you an example of like the most egregious things, the things that drive me crazy. And I see them, and I'm sure you do too with your students. Let me share an example. I have a an image to show you of three garments, vertical stripe really, really thin stripe that looks like this is the uh, moray pattern, which is the distortion that happens in the camera, the one in the middle, and then polka dots. Maybe if you can get away with very, very tiny polka dots, but large polka dots, I mean, just looking at it on the screen now, doesn't it like make you dizzy? It does. I feel like it's, and, and the stripes, it's, it's almost about to set off a seizure. Like it's too much for you. It's really playing with your eyes. I feel like I should have those, you know, red and blue 3D glasses on like <laughs> while I'm watching you. Yeah. With, with yeah. yeah. I mean, as, as a rule of thumb, uh, uh, solid patterns are best, right? Solid patterns. I'm wearing fuchsia. You're wearing cobalt. You know, these are, these are tried and true colors. Have a a Zoom wardrobe, right? And pick up yes. the that you know that you don't have to think about it. Guys too, same way. Don't 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 use a t-shirt that's got the you know the overstretched collar. Uh, have something that really represents you at your best. You don't have to go shirt and tie unless you're doing an interview. But have all these things ready so you don't have to scramble when you have to turn on the camera. That's an excellent point. So I happen to like stripes, but you know, with the advent of work from home. I had to go out and buy a lot of solids and I do have a Zoom wardrobe, folks. And since I video record most of my <laughs> programs, they probably see me, they probably think I only own like five tops, but it's what looks well on camera. And then also uh, keep in the back of your mind, it may look one color to you, but then your camera may be picking up a different color. And right. you've had that happen where it looks crazy. You're like, oh my gosh, what color is this picking up? So test out what you're going to wear. So, um, you know, before your, your meeting. Um, and, and again, there are a lot of inexpensive options out there, uh, you know, for, for dressing from the, the waist up, you know, to look your best. And the same thing goes for jewelry, reflections of jewelry, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it's very distracting. Uh, you know, yeah. in addition to your your apparel choices, things that things that that uh, that move, that have a lot of reflection, a lot of sparkle, uh, all these things. There's just so much to it. It's uh, it is fascinating. I have had the issue where I was wearing something that was orange because I wanted to try different hues, and it came up as as tomato red, and I couldn't figure out why. I had to make some small calibrations to my Logitech webcam settings just to slightly move it over and the, for the color setting and voila, what was uh, tomato red came up as the true color, which was more of a pumpkin mm -hmm. orange. And it was so remarkable that that slight adjustment really got me the true color that I wanted to, uh, to show. And, but again, do that before your meeting. There is no way, you know, as a host, you'd be able to, you know, Certainly. start pulling around with camera settings, right? And, and yeah. trying to change your, your shirt color. Yeah, that right, doesn't right. look psychedelic. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take one more question. Great. What do we have? Uh huh. One of my favorites. <laughs> is it okay to eat on camera? And no. Answer, let's tell them <laughs> no, why. No. You wouldn't eat on. You wouldn't eat in front of somebody in a meeting, right? You wouldn't be stuffing your mouth if you're on the phone. With, I hope not. With on the phone with somebody, it's just unpleasant uh, to look at. If you feel like you need to eat on camera, please turn your camera off. Or for example, if you need to have a beverage, we're all talkers, our mouth gets dry, understandable. Uh, but then put your beverage in a glass or something reasonable. Um, I, excellent show I and tell. I use a straw. Excellent, a straw, it right? So it doesn't make, I mess up my lipstick. Mostly. Dual purpose. <laughs> but uh, you know, I've been in an experience where somebody was chugging a two liter bottle of soda in front and all you saw was this giant bottle in front of their face, uh, you know, and the same thing, you know, with lunch, you make your schedule 
grab a bite before or after. And if you feel like you need to eat on camera, you know, eat, yeah. turn your camera off and mute yourself so we don't have to hear you crunching away there. <laughs> right. And taking a cue from the attendance of public speaking, don't eat something that's going to uh, make your mouth dry, right? Or that's going to stick to your teeth. Like don't eat peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> things of that nature, right? That are that have a certain consistency. Things that are going to moisten your mouth. When you make, and make sure you drink a lot of fluids beforehand. I have a rule of thumb. I I will have like a yogurt shake or something that's liquid before, so that I don't have to. So that I don't have to worry about you know things getting stuck in my teeth or having that residue in my mouth. And so that's something I've done for years. But again, public speaker, professional public speakers know what what and when they can eat before they do a, a presentation. That's a great point. You don't want to have a piece of lettuce stuck between your teeth that's going to be recorded for all of time. <laughs> and worse, you feel it, but you can't do anything about it. Right, you, right. Can't, you can't get it out while you're while you're, you know, on stage. It's like, oh, right. that's real annoying. That's I would be the friend, I would be the friend though to like text the host and say, you know what, you got to take care of this. Go off camera. <laughs> that's right. If there are no more questions from LinkedIn or Facebook, uh, I see that there were some comments, but if there's no more questions, I think we can wrap up this wonderful 30 minutes. Gina, I hope you'll come back and, and talk with me some more. It's, it's, oh. it's just having two points of view and having this exchange, I think is always so, so exciting. And I hope it's been of value to people listening and who will watch the replay. This is going to be happening every Tuesday. Maybe Gina, you'll come back with me before the month is over every Tuesday in September. And I may continue it into October, but this is a special opportunity to really ask those questions that you have been nagging you, that you, you have not had time to get answered. And at the same time, we want to hear what's bugging you so that we, we train people every day on how to do this better. It helps us adjust our curriculum and provide better content and better educational programs for our students. So with that, let me show people how they can get in touch with you, Gina. Oh, great. Uh, Gina, you run wonderful programs for lifelong learning. You also work with, with people who are not in senior communities, but you created some wonderful educational programs that really just bring this whole video conferencing world to life for people and, and keep them connected to their families. And yeah, Zoom, I have to say video conferencing, especially Zoom and with its ease of use is the modern miracle for reducing loneliness and isolation as we see the pandemic being you know, drawn out and all of us still working from home, no matter the age, uh, it's a great way to stay in touch and, and also, you know, but also remember to look professional, whether it is in a business setting or in a casual setting, uh, you still wanna maintain uh, you know, some uh, great presence. And also uh, on my website, you can check out, I do have a page up there. Uh, people always ask me my recommendations, whether it's for a green screen, Great cameras, things like that. So people can check all that out and see my list for working from home. Excellent. It's a great name out of the box, New Jersey. Great. And, and you have your logo right there. Great branding. Great, great branding. Now, for those of you who never didn't get to ans ask your questions and who may have questions after we go off all fair, please do write me at info at rosemaryravenel.com. That's my domain, rosemaryravenel.com. I invite you to visit my website as well. There's tons of blogs and information that you can put to use right away on every aspect of public speaking, presenting, and media relations on Zoom or the platform of choice. And to see how well you know Zoom, I do invite you also to take part in my Zoom score quiz. Zoom score is a 10 point scale, it's a yardstick to determine whether you have the basics down pat in terms of showing up as your best, using your equipment properly, your appearance, all those things that really comprise professional video presence. So check out your Zoom score in the right there, getyourzoomscore.com. And it's free. And it'll also put you directly on my mailing list to receive regular newsletters and useful information. Gina, thank you. Thanks to all of you who watched. We'll do this again next Tuesday at 12 Eastern time. And we'll do this a few more Tuesdays in September. Have a great, beautiful day, everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Take care.